Om Sai Ram. This is Sai Satcharitra Chapter 9. This chapter covers the following. The effect of compliance and non-compliance with Baba's orders. The necessity of mendicancy. The Tarkad family's experiences. And how Baba was fed sumptuously. At the end of the last chapter, it was stated briefly that devotees who obeyed Baba's orders at the time of taking leave fared well, while those who disobeyed them suffered many a mishap. This statement will be amplified and illustrated with a few striking instances, the special characteristic of a Shirdi pilgrimage. One special feature of a pilgrimage to Shirdi was that no one could leave Shirdi without Baba's permission, and if he did, he invited untold sufferings. But if anyone was asked to leave Shirdi, he could stay there no longer. Baba gave certain hints when devotees went to bid him goodbye. These suggestions had to be followed. If they were not followed or were departed from, accidents were sure to befall those who acted contrary to Baba's directions. A few instances are given below. Tatya Kote Patl. Tatya Kote was once going in a tanga, that is a horse-drawn cart, to the Kopargaon Bazaar. He hastily came to the masjid, greeted Baba, and said that he was going to the Kopargaon Bazaar. Baba said, don't hurry, wait a little, forget the bazaar, and don't leave the village. On seeing his anxiety to go, Baba asked him to take Shama, that is Madhav Rao Deshpande, with him. Disregarding Baba's directions, Tatya Kote immediately drove off in his tanga. Of the two horses that pulled the tanga, one was very active and restless. After passing a well, it began to run rashly, sprained its waist, and fell. Tatya was not badly hurt, but was reminded of Mother Sai's directions. On another occasion, while proceeding to Kolhar village, he again disregarded Baba's directions and drove in a tanga which met with a similar accident. The European Gentleman A European gentleman from Bombay once came to Shirdi with an introductory note from Nana Sahib Chandorkar. He had some objective in mind and was comfortably accommodated in a tent. He wanted to kneel before Baba and kiss his hand. Therefore, he tried thrice to step into the masjid, but Baba prevented him from doing so. He was asked to sit in the open courtyard below and receive Baba's darshan from there. Not pleased with the reception he got, he wanted to leave Shirdi at once and came to bid goodbye. Baba asked him to go the next day and not to hurry. People also requested him to abide by Baba's directions. Refusing to listen to this, he left Shirdi in a tanga. The horses ran all right at first, but upon passing a well, a bicycle crossed their path. The horses saw the bicycle, were frightened, and ran faster. The tanga overturned, and the gentleman fell and was dragged some distance. He was immediately rescued, but had to be admitted to the Kopargaon hospital for the treatment of his injuries. Because of such experiences, everyone learned the lesson that those who disobeyed Baba's instructions met with accidents in one way or the other, and those who obeyed them were safe and happy. The necessity of mendicancy. Now we return to the question of mendicancy. The question Question may arise in the minds of some. If Baba was such a great personage, God in fact, why should he have recourse to the begging bowl all his life? This question may be considered and addressed from two standpoints. Number one, who has the right to live by the begging bowl? Our religious scriptures say that those persons who get rid of the three main desires for progeny, wealth, and for fame, and accept sannyas, are fit to live by begging. They cannot make cooking arrangements and dine at home. The duty of feeding them rests on the shoulders of householders. Sai Baba was not a householder. He was a celibate sannyasi. His firm conviction was that the universe was his home and that he was the Lord Vasudev, the supporter of the universe and the imperishable Brahman. So he had the right to have recourse to the begging bowl. Number two, from the standpoint of Pancha Sun or the five sins and their atonement, we all know that in order to prepare meals, householders have to go through five actions or processes, Kandani, that is pounding, or grinding, udakumbi or washing pots, marjani or sweeping and cleaning, and chuli or lighting hearths. These processes involve the destruction of a lot of small insects and creatures, and thus the householders incur a lot of sin. In order to atone for this, our holy scriptures prescribe five kinds of sacrifices, namely Brahma Yajna, Veda Dhyan, that is offerings to Brahma or the study of the Vedas, Pitra Yajna, offerings to the ancestors, Deva Yajna, offerings to gods, 
ಭೂತ ಯಜ್ಞ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ಸ್ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಅತಿಥಿ ಯಜ್ಞ ಆರ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಅನ್ಇನ್ವೈಟೆಡ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡ್ಯೂಲಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ದ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಇನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಟು ಹೌಸ್ ರಿಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ದ ರೆಸಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ರಿಸೀವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ನೌ ವಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೆಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಭಗವತ್ ಗೀತಾ ಹೂ ಸೋ ಎವರ್ ಡಿವೌಟ್ಲಿ ಆಫರ್ಸ್ ಮೀ ಅ ಲೀಫ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ಅ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಓ ವಾಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಇಫ್ ಅ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ರಿಯಲಿ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಫರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫರ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಟು ಆಫರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬಾಬಾ ರಿಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬಿಲೋ ದ ತರ್ಕದ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಫಾದರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸನ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಆತ್ಮಾರಾಮ್ ಲಾಯಸ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಸಾಹೇಬ್ ತರ್ಕದ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಅ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನಾ ಸಮಾಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಾಂಚ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಹಿಸ್ ವೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸನ್ ಲವ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ಓ ಪರ್ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ತರ್ಕದ್ ವುಡ್ ಗೋ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಟು ಶಿರ್ಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವೆಕೇಶನ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅನ್ವಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಅಸ್ ಯು ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಹಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಅಟ್ ಬಾಂದ್ರಾ ದ ವರ್ಷಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೌಸ್ ವುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಹಿ ಫೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನಾ ಸಮಾಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕೇರ್ ಟು ವರ್ಷಪ್ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾಬಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಪೋರ್ಟ್ರೆಟ್ ಹೌ ಎವರ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಪ್ಲೆಜ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ವರ್ಷಪ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅಸ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶಿರ್ಡಿ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರೈಡೆ ನೈಟ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ತರ್ಕದ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಬೇಧ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಶ್ರೈನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಐಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅಸ್ ಮೈ ಸನ್ ಹಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಡ್ರಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಹಿ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಪೀಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಂಪ್ ಶುಗರ್ ಅಸ್ ನೈವೇದ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಲಂಚ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಸಂಡೇ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ದ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಮಂಡೇ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಡೇ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ತರ್ಕದ್ ಹೂ ಹೆಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫೆಲ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ಯೂಸ್ಡೇ ಹಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಅಸ್ ಯೂಶಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಅಟ್ ನೂನ್ ಹಿ ಫೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ನೈವೇದ್ಯ ಟು ಸರ್ವ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಮೀಲ್ ಹಿ ಆಸ್ ದ ಕುಕ್ ಹೂ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದಟ್ ನೋ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಬಿನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ದಟ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಹೆಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ಗಾಟನ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಶ್ರೈನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ರಿಗ್ರೆಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಚೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವಾಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇರ್
When an inquiry was made as to who had brought the bharit, it was found that Mrs. Purandare was also entrusted with the duty of serving Kacharyas. Everybody then came to know the significance of Baba's inquiry regarding Kacharyas and were wonderstruck at Baba's all-pervasive knowledge. In December 1915, Govind Balaram Mankar wanted to go to Shirdi to perform the obsequies of his father. Before he left, he came to see Mr. Tarkad. Mrs. Tarkad wanted to send something with him to Baba. She searched the whole house but found nothing except a peda, an oval-shaped sweet which had already been offered as naivedya. Govind was in mourning and yet out of great devotion to Baba, she sent the peda with him, hoping that Baba would accept and eat it. Govind went to Shirdi and saw Baba but forgot to take the peda with him. Baba simply waited. When he again went to see Baba in the afternoon, he again forgot to take the peda with him. Baba could wait no longer and asked him, What did you bring for me? Nothing was the reply. Baba asked him again and the same reply came forth again. Then Baba asked him the leading question. Did the mother, Mrs. Tarkat, not give you some sweet for me? Govind then remembered the whole thing. He felt abashed, asked for Baba's pardon, ran to his lodging, brought the peda and gave it to Baba. As soon as Baba received it, he put it into his mouth and swallowed it. Thus, the devotion of Mrs. Tarkad was recognized and accepted. As men believe in me, so do I accept them. From the Bhagavad Gita was proven in this case. How Baba was fed sumptuously Once, Mrs. Tarkad was staying in a certain house in Shirdi. At noon, the meals were ready and dishes were being served when a hungry dog turned up there and began to bark and whine. Mrs. Tarkad got up at once and threw the dog a piece of bread, which the dog gulped with great relish. In the afternoon, when she went to the masjid, Sai Baba said to her, Mother, you have fed me sumptuously up to my throat, and my afflicted pranas or life forces have been satisfied. Always act like this, and this will stand you in good stead. Sitting in this masjid, I shall never speak anything but the truth. Take pity on me like this. First give bread to the hungry and then eat. Note this well. She could not at first understand the meaning of what Baba said. So she replied, Baba, how could I feed you? I am myself dependent on others and take my food from them on payment. Then Baba replied, having eaten that lovely bread, I am very content and am still belching. The dog which you saw before your meal and to which you gave the piece of bread is one with me and so are all the other creatures on earth. I roam in their forms. He who sees me in all these creatures is my beloved. So abandon the sense of duality and distinction and serve me as you did today. Upon hearing these nectar-like words, she was moved. Her eyes were filled with tears. Her throat was choked and her joy knew no bounds. Moral of the story. See God in all beings is the moral of the story. The Upanishads, the Gita and the Bhagwat all exhort us to perceive God or divinity in all creatures. By the instance given at the end of this chapter and others too numerous to mention, Sai Baba has practically demonstrated to us how to put the Upanishadic teachings into practice. In this way, Sai Baba stands as the best exponent or teacher of the Upanishadic doctrines. Bow to Sri Sai, peace be to all. And this brings us to the end of Sai Satcharitra, Chapter 9.